Welcome back, Coney is here. Today I'm flying from Phoenix, Arizona to Tucson, Arizona. I'm flying a Cessna 208B Grand Caravan. We'll be flying at a flight level of 5,500 feet using autopilot most of the way. I usually bypass, or I should say pre-set up the autopilot, but I thought I'd go through it this time. So I'm going to go ahead and click this to set our current heading as kind of a default course. And then I'm going to set our altitude at 5,500. I want it to be about 3,000 feet off the ground, and we're already up almost 1,300 feet. So we need to go a little higher, so we'll do 5,500. I will turn on navigation mode in advance, but leave autopilot disengaged. And we're ready to go. Take off the parking brake and begin throttling up. the airport and then I'll make my turn. Go ahead and get the flaps up. So I'll get the plane on the course. And then we'll turn over to autopilot to handle most of the flight for us. Phoenix Tower KH283 continue for south departure. So we're not perfectly on course. I'm going to keep turning a bit, try to get us perfectly in line, looking at the pink lines on the compass. Uh, it should be one solid arrow from beginning to end. So let's just continue heading towards the right a bit. Probably enough turning, and then we'll just glide into the proper heading and turn back. There's a little bit of a wind on one side. Feels like there's a wind coming from the right side. So we're almost there. If there's one thing flying has taught me, it's patience. And I'm still learning it every time. But Phoenix Tower KH two eight three. You just have to slow down and take things slow, careful. Phoenix Approach KH two eight three is type Cessna Caravan, four miles southeast of Sky Harbor, three thousand seven hundred feet. All right, so we're pretty close to being properly on course. I'm going to head back towards the proper heading. KH283 Phoenix Approach. Squawk 6416. And I should be able to just engage the autopilot at this point and have it take over navigation. KH283 radar contact 5 miles southeast of Sky Harbor, 4,300 feet. Clear through the Bravo airspace. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn on flight level Clear change. Clear Bravo Airspace KH283. KH283, there we contact go. Phoenix approach right. on ONA 23 decimal 7. So that'll get us... Actually, we might already be in altitude hold mode. Phoenix approach we're so close. But anyway, that'll make sure that we get up to our feet. requested 5,500 feet. Phoenix approach continue as planned. Once we stabilize, I'll go outside and we can look around see what it looks like flying from Phoenix to Tucson. Never been in Tucson, I've been in Phoenix a couple of times um, flying through, but never for sightseeing. 
both times it was very hot, but of course that's to be expected. Alright, we're leveling off and we're starting to speed up. I'm going to pull off the throttle a bit. Alright, this looks pretty stable. Let's go ahead and go outside. Grab my Xbox controller. Interesting, something called the Stellar Air Park. I could probably land there if I wanted to. Yeah, it looks like it's a proper airport. It's a beautiful day in Arizona. This is real-time weather, real-time time of day, 11.40 a.m. Wow, that's a beautiful view with the mountains in the background. This looks like it must be an old lake. A lot of residential, a lot of industrial down there. This is a huge area. It looks like it just goes on and on and on. Not sure what the main industry is in Phoenix. Maybe technology? I'm not sure. There's clearly a dark and a light section in the land, but my guess is that two separate satellite photos, maybe taken at different times. It's pretty easy to see satellite photo seams in Flight Simulator. I'm hoping that they'll do something to make those transitions a little smoother. It definitely looks unusual. You wouldn't expect the dirt to go from brown to tan. Of course, maybe it's possible. side for a minute. So the plane will pretty much take us where we need to go at this point. It's just a matter of some sightseeing now. This is probably pretty much satellite photo and Procedural generated stuff doesn't look very high quality. Might be interesting to go out and take the drone and just go down there and take a look and see what does look like up close. So we're going to want to go to high speed. Follow mode, we don't want. Alright, so now we're independent of the plane. Let's get rid of that and the cursor, and let's go explore a little bit. So the plane should be fine. I shouldn't need to worry about throttle and whatnot. Yeah, that's a very distinct dividing line, so I'm sure that's got to be two different sets of satellite photography. 
I mean, obviously, look, see, oops, uh, right there, clearly. And that's interesting. I like that. I wonder if they can actually use the water for anything. Looks like it's pretty much just decoration, not usable. But I see a lot of these around here. It's very interesting. I guess if you're living out in a desert area, you want to add some water. I don't know if it's possible to spot the plane from here. I mean, it's so tiny. Um, we have some time before I feel like I have to really worry about it. Just interesting seeing all the water incorporated into these neighborhoods. You have to wonder about the evaporation rate and how often they're having to fill it. I guess that must be a golf course with a lot of <coughs> non-green grass, it looks like. But again, we're in the desert, so what do you expect? Ooh, it's a little low. All right, I wanted to see what these uh, water waves look like up close. And if the problem with the drone speed is now it's a little hard to fine tune. All right, but there's some water. It actually goes under the roadway in this case. That's interesting because a lot of times you'll see water go over the roadway in flight simulator. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and hit be head back to the plane, which is just hitting five on the numpad, usually, anyway. Uh, right, it has to be the numlock. There we go. Okay, back inside, back at the default view, going at a proper speed, proper altitude, proper heading. So we're in good shape. Now would be a good time to read a book, eat lunch, practice guitar, whatever whatever you brought along to amuse yourself as a pilot while taking a long flight. Um, I suppose if there were passengers you could sing songs or something. Um, of course as a pilot you've got to keep your eye constantly on all the instruments, but it's not to say that you can't also enjoy the flight and multitask. Okay, so I'm using the mouse now to move around inside, which can tend to be convenient, especially if you're planning to use the controls. Not as smooth as the con Xbox controller, so if I switch to that one, that's just a lot nicer and smoother. And then you just have to be careful about not hitting that lift stick because it is your flight stick. And so it will it will definitely jostle the plane, it may kick it out of autopilot. I don't know if there's a way to change zoom from the 360 controller, so I use the mouse wheel for that. It'd be nice to be able to do that though from the controller if there's a way. Alright, so I guess it just went out of autopilot mode. Might have been something I hit on the on the th uh, 360 controller. So let's just check that it's still in navigation mode. Uh, okay, it's in navigation mode. Let's engage on pilot again. It 
won't engage. Okay, interesting. I'm not sure why. It, maybe it crashed or there's some problem with the plane or problem with the avionics. It is a little surprising that it's not working. And there was really no explanation for it going out of autopilot. But that's okay, we can fly the plane. Alright, so I'm going a little higher than I want. I'm going to head back down a bit. KH283, contact Albuquerque Center on 125 decimal four. Going to 125 decimal for KH283. Albuquerque Center, KH283, 6,300 feet. KH283, Albuquerque Center, continue as planned. Altimeter 29 decimal 86. I always hit B when I hear them say the barometer, just to make sure that the altitude is calibrated. Already sounding radio signal, sound pretty realistic. Alright, back up a little bit on the throttle, kind of leveling off now. Flight director still working, that's that purple arrow or pink arrow. Yeah, I just don't understand why autopilot turned off. There are a lot of things I don't understand. I'm kind of learning this as I go. I'm imagining it, there could be something I need to do, and so it needs me to pay attention. Maybe it's cold, I need to turn pilot heat on. I've got the banners from the game turned off, the notification banners, so uh, it's not telling me that kind of stuff. I think there would be some kind of indication, though, if I needed to, to do that. I find with my single joystick style flight stick that using two hands is really handy. I think I really would like to get a yoke. Proper two handles. Alright, we're getting off course a little bit here. Climb and maintain flight level 220. Expect ILS runway 8 approach via Alice transition clear to Alice Skyless 3158. Go outside and look around a little bit. I can't do too much of that. I've got to actually actively fly the plane. But it's all right. Speed is still looking good. We could probably go a bit faster. Outside term for the most part for looking around and flying time I want to do inside just to get that real pilot experience. Uh, it was uh, scary the first time I decided to land from inside the cockpit because Obviously when you're outside you can see when the wheels are going to touch, you can see exactly how far off the ground you are. You don't get that same feedback directly flying or landing from inside the cockpit. But I think um, over time you can develop a sense for how close you are, the instruments can tell you 
can get a feeling for maybe the ground effects. I don't have that sense yet, but I'm imagining that that's true. It does seem like if you had to actively fly the whole time and keep the flight comfortable and smooth and level, it would just be a tremendous amount of work. Um, I really do rely on autopilot to take care of that for the most part, and that makes the flight very smooth, very, you know, no noticeable corrections, really. Um, I think over time, flying in person, the stability will come more naturally, but at the moment it's not really the case. Alright, so looks like we're back on course. Trying to hold the yellow arrow in the center of the well, Garmin there. Hold it at the at the white horizon line to try to hold steady altitude. There's a challenge, or I guess one of the training flights where you're supposed to hold it at exactly 5,500 feet or something, and try it and try it and try it. I could never satisfy the game that I was holding the altitude. Even if I held it within a few knots, it still wasn't, I still wasn't passing. I don't know how you can hold it at a precise altitude, with arbitrary wind conditions. Alright, so our altitude's good, 5,000 feet or so, that's fine. Speed is good. Faster, but if I stop pulling up, I don't have So apparently, we contacted Albuquerque approach, so Tucson must be very close to Albuquerque. I suppose that might be our next destination on my learning to fly tour. I think we're okay to get over these mountains. I don't really see a problem. I do feel some wind kind of pushing up though from that side of things, it feels like. It does really seem necessary to use both hands for an, this kind of stability. One hand to tend to overcorrect to this one. Decimal 4KH283. The co pilot Tucson handling KH283, tower traffic feet. for us. I switched back. I had a female co pilot. I switched back because I don't have multiple different female voices on my system. And so it just sounded like the same voice on the plane and in the tower a lot. I looked online. I couldn't find any additional voices. I don't know if that's a possibility. It would be nice to have more variety in voices, though. I don't know if I can switch to British accents or something along those lines, although... I mean, that, that would obviously be fine, but uh, it is supposed to remain English on aircraft radio. Some kind of English, I guess. Actually, yeah, so now, now I'm flying with one hand. It's not quite as stable as it was. Holding two hands up on the stick is a little tiring, but I think we're doing fine. Speed's fine, altitude's fine, pitch is fine. There's two little arrows at the top of the horizon control, horizon display, and it's very handy because they line up when you're perfectly level, so it's very easy to tell. So 
caught myself pulling up again. I feel like a main area of practice with lots of flying time would be just making this holding at a single altitude and heading and everything, making that much more automatic and not have to think about it so much. And at the same time have a smooth flight, have passengers that aren't spilling their drinks. And let's go outside and take a look again, see what the area looks like. turn it over to the co-pilot, but they don't do a great job. Just a passable job of flying the plane. Before, um, I guess before the first patch, I turned autopilot on in one of the jumbo jets, and autopilot wanted to nosedive the plane, so um, it might have been my fault for not setting it up correctly, but I felt like I had set it up the right way. So get us back on course here a bit. Um, still around 5,000 feet in altitude. I feel like we could be going just a bit faster. Keep an eye on that torque meter over on the middle console. I have a tendency to push the throttle too high and over torque the engine, and then this starts lighting up and flashing red. I'll go ahead and start lowering altitude a bit in preparation for landing in a little while. We don't want to be so high when we approach the airport that there's not enough time to slow down. A bit fast, I'm going to pull back the throttle. Give us some room to speed up and descend. I guess I'll go down to around 4,000 and then hold. Getting off track here a little bit. a little bit like a juggling act sometime. I'm having to watch my throttle, I'm having to watch my pitch, I'm having to watch my heading, I'm having to watch engine torque and RPM, uh, I'm having to watch horizon. A lot of stuff to juggle, but it gets easier each time.
difficult to make turning perfectly smooth, although I'm getting better. The issue is that you have to alter um, your pitch while turning, and so lift up a bit before the turn, and then you have to push down after the turn, and so that's if you want to maintain the same altitude. Uh, something I'm practicing, but it takes some time. It's starting to become a bit automatic. Okay, we're going a bit fast. I'm going to pull back on the throttle, and I actually wasn't leveling off. I was dropping down. So let's level off. See, there's again, you know, I was not paying attention to one of the factors, the altitude, and we went way down below where I wanted to be, actually. So we can afford to lift up a bit. issue with these mountains over here. If we do, I'll just head back up. I do need to get back on course. And so when I bring the plane back to level, I'm also pushing slightly down, or pushing forward on the stick to keep it level. That was a pretty smooth transition. It's not always that smooth, though. This feels comfortable when we get to about 10 or 11 miles away. The co pilot will contact the tower and arrange for a landing. I'm assuming the landing pattern entrance will be more like 3,000 feet, maybe. So we're probably going to want to continue to descend a bit before we get there. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll drop the throttle and bring it down. Still not exactly on course, I need to make that correction. It's important to stick to the plan, probably in real life, and so let's do that in the game. Alright, so I was thinking of speeding up to get there faster, but I would really rather not build up a big head of steam going into the landing, and rather stay down at a reasonable speed and not have to deal with so much slowing down. It can get really hard sometimes to keep the plane under control trying to land if you're going too fast. Alright, so I need to pull up a little bit because I feel like I'm dropping too much. It'll also help with the speed. I really don't know what the landing pattern entrance is going to be like, how high it's going to be, if it's going to turn or not. But we'll see when we get there. We're really only minutes away. We can afford to go out and look outside for a minute while we're heading there. Just make sure I'm kind of level. Very sparse, like houses with huge amounts of land with nothing around. I don't, I don't know if I'd want to live in a situation like this, but I guess they're also hilly, so maybe it's really nice. Who knows? I see a little three-dimensionality as it go by some of these locations. It's hard to do that in flight plane at the same time. those mountains off in the background of the water. More mountains. I'm not 
sure where the Grand Canyon is. I guess maybe I should fly through it. Not this time. Maybe I'll do a, another flight. Make that kind of an Arizona tour thing. Alright, so I'll go back and find inside to fly. Outside is for looking. Only 500 feet off the ground. I have a feeling that the landing pattern is going to be a lot higher than that, so let's head back up to maybe 4,000. Should be contacting the tower anytime. Tucson Tower KH283 is 1 1 miles northwest with Kilo to land. here where that landing entrance is. is there, I see it now. Okay. So almost at a good altitude. I think I can drop back on the throttle. Let's start turning and then I will put the flaps down and get us really going nice and slow. hard on the stick when those flaps go down. Push forward on it to keep it to keep the nose down. Now I suspect that I could get good at doing the push down at the same time the flaps go down and you wouldn't notice. I'm kind of trying to focus on moves like that to make the flights more smooth. Okay, apparently this airport's going to want us to be going below 75 when we land. Okay, so she said clear ILS. I don't know if I have... I don't think this plane has ILS. It might... I don't know how to use it. At some point I would like to learn how to use that. Clear ILS runway 11 left approach Teton 299 our speed is good. Uh, everything looks good so far for the landing. See the runway down there at the end, just straight on. Hey, clear to land runway, one one right. Drop the throttle a bit more see if we can get some some of the speed burned off. Clear to land runway one one right KH283. We need to be even going slower to get past the last of the landing pattern. Alright, that's when I switched to one hand, back to two hands to try to get this more stable. I'm watching my speed decline, so let's give it some more thrust.
find that fine balance between stalling and staying barely afloat. back on the pedals. Alright, speed looks pretty good. I'd like to drop the throttle just a bit more, see if we can get closer to that bottom edge of that white line, uh, which is where we'll stall with the flaps down. Try to not go below these um, brackets on the screen, but I don't think that's actually a problem. You just need to stay off the ground, basically. I'm going super slow. I need to give it a little bit more thrust for safety's sake. Do not want to stall and miss the runway. Although we're coming close to doing that if I don't give us more thrust. instruments went dark. We had that autopilot problem earlier, which I don't understand what that was about. I'm going to just have to wing this. I can kind of see the screen, but we're going to just try to level off and float above the runway for a while here. I don't even know if the radio works anymore. Oh, this is not good. Oh, that was not a good landing. I don't know why it went so crazy at the last minute. Maybe I was going too fast. K two eight three contact ground on O N E two four decimal four. Okay, so the radio still works. Going to one two four decimal four K H two eight three. I don't understand what happened with the electrical system. Okay, let's uh, let's pull off over here. Contact ground. Okay, there's the parking brake. Um, huh. Yeah, I don't know why that turned down all of a sudden. I heard a beep and then it went dark. I think for some reason it must have thought. It was nighttime, I guess. I don't know. Anyway. Alright, let's contact ground. Taxi to parking. Tucson ground, KH283, taxi to parking. KH283, taxi to general aviation parking using taxiway Charlie Cross Runway 11 left Alpha Delta Cross Runway 11 left Delta Cross Runway 2. All right, there we go. Taxi Take to General parking Aviation break. Parking using Taxiway Charlie Cross Runway 11 left Alpha Delta Cross Runway 11 left Delta Cross Runway 29 or left Delta right, so K. I'm go back inside. This is technically part of flying. It's the taxiing, so I want to try to do that stuff from the inside. Uh, are we actually hold cr position? K H two H three. Hold position. Right. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to push back. Oh, now we can continue, okay. Roger, KH283. I saw Squirrel push his airplane back in another video, so there's probably a keyboard command to do that. I just need to look it up. Uh, but there are times when it would be handy to be able to back up. That's, I guess, not realistic, though. You'd have to call somebody to push you back or get out of the plane or something, push on. Alright, a little bit of brake steering here. Okay. 
and rudder stern. Brake steering is a little confusing, although it's very handy, because it's opposite of the rudder steering, and so you have to do two kind of opposite things with your feet at the same time. Tucson ground, FlexJet 59 or 5 requesting pushback. FlexJet 59 or 5 pushback request accepted. We're not going to hit people here. I see they're in, they're in our way, which is odd. I don't understand why. Um, am I supposed to, like, wait for him or something? Hmm. No, I'll just throw it around. I assume these lights on the ground are rubberized or something, because otherwise they would damage airplanes. Another runway, so I should probably, you know, stop and look. Somebody's on final. Okay. Hold position KH283. Who is on final? And can we see them? I don't see anybody. Alright, we'll put on the parking brake. Rev the engine up a little bit so we don't run our battery down. I don't know why that was a problem after one of the patches, but. Tucson ground, flex jet 59 or 5 requesting the end of pushback. Seems like after the first patch, uh. Aircraft batteries got very weak. Uh, sitting on the tarmac, that the plane would suddenly, uh, the, the avionics would run out of battery, and the plane would start acting funny. Use on ground, flex jet five nine or five with kilo ready to taxi IFR. Okay, so we're still holding. Flex jet five nine or five taxi to an halt short of runway one one left by a taxiway Fox Trot Alpha cross runway two one Echo. Contact tower on one one eight decimal three when ready. I don't see this other plane. Flaps up, I always forget to do that. Yeah, we still don't have clearance to move. We may just go anyway, rather than we... Um, I guess we're just stuck waiting. I don't see any other airplanes. Alright, I'm just gonna go ahead and go. position.
time to use uh, braking, brake steering, and regular steering, and try to not to run over the guy over. Uh, I think I did. Pierce on ground. Sky West Tree, 042 requesting the end of pushback. Um, yeah, I missed the spot. So let's go ahead and fix that. I think the mistake was I was going too fast and I just couldn't, couldn't slow down in time. Alright, so this is a good break. Engine shut off. off. Let's turn off the plane. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.